Hi, I'm Sanjeev and we are in the laser lab in Willis Annex. This is Joseph. Uh, Joseph, do you want to give an introduction and overview of your research? Sure. Uh, so, my name is Joseph and I'm one of Tracy's PhD's PhD student. And my project mainly revolves around mainly uh, microbubble dynamics. Cool. Uh, why microbubbles? What's special about them? Yeah, so to answer that question, I'll have to talk a little bit about the overview of my problem. Yeah. So uh, kidneys are the organs in human body that helps cleanse and filter the blood. Yeah. Um, but with the patients whose kidneys don't function normally, uh, we have to take their blood outside of their body cool. and then artificially cleanse it before transfusing it back to their body. Uh, this process is called hemodialysis. Mm. And because of this inherent nature of taking the blood outside of the body, there are ways for air bubbles to be introduced into the bloodstream. And as part of the safety measure, there is a device called an air trap yep. that uh, traps and prevents air bubbles from flowing into the patient. Okay, okay. So, cool. yeah, that's yep. where, um, yeah. so, yeah, there is an issue currently with this design because it uses buoyancy to capture the air bubbles. Okay, uh, buoyancy as in art, so just, just let the bubbles float yeah. up, that's basically how Yes, it it's pretty simple. Uh, okay. So buoyancy will allow the bubbles to rise or okay. float. And this air, these conventional air traps will simply capture the bubbles using that. Mm. And um, physically, yeah. uh, these buoyancies are only significant when air bubbles are large enough. So when it comes to smaller micro bubbles, mm. these buoyancies are exponentially smaller and we, it's almost negligible. And that's why micro bubbles cannot be filtered effectively using the conventional design. Okay, cool. So then how are you trying to move bubbles or how are you trying to manipulate these bubbles? What, what, what phenomenon are you trying to use? Yeah, so um, my approach is experimental in nature to... So overall, basically what I want to achieve through this PhD project is to uh, come up with a better system or de design yeah. or mechanism to capture the micro bubbles. Okay. So it can only be effectively answered using an experimental uh, approach. Um, so essentially, um, in simple terms, I'm, I make bubbles okay. and I move the bubbles and eventually I would like to remove these bubbles. Make more, remove. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that's cool. so. so yeah, in terms of making the bubbles, yeah. um, I'm using gas injection method, okay. which seemed most appropriate for our particular case. Okay. And this method is simply, well, as its name implies, we inject gases to fluid. Yeah. So, I guess I can explain that using schematics. Yeah, if you, if you could. So, you mentioned make, move, remove. Uh, could you take me through those steps? Sure. Um, so, in terms of making the bubbles, yeah. um, we're using gas injection method. Yeah. Um, well, as its name implies, it's simply injecting the gas mm. into uh, fluid. Uh, so, as you can see in the schematics, um, we have three main components. We have a micro pipette, and we have a compressed air, uh, and we have flowing liquid, yeah. which in this case we're using water. So why? Yeah, well, the, the reason why we need a compressed air is obviously we need higher pressure to uh, inject the gases through pipette, which okay. has very high resistance. And also we need a flowing liquid because without it, the bubbles will simply grow at the tip of the micro pipette. So we need additional force. Um, in this case, uh, drag force that comes from the flowing water uh, to carry the bubbles off from the tip of the micro pipette as they grow. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's how um, we are generating the bubbles. Yep. Um, and here are some of the videos uh, of our preliminary results. Mm, so cool. this shows, well, about 220 microns of uh, air bubbles being generated. Yep. And this is, well, using a smaller pipette, we could generate smaller micro bubbles. So almost a factor, a lot yeah. smaller, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, a factor of 10 even. Factor so of 10. it well. is possible we could even make smaller bubbles. Yeah. So that's one of the problems that we're investigating. Yeah. And also, um, this is our la la latest uh, result. So because of the uh, many other things that we would like to test with micro bubbles. Yeah. We wanted the ability to generate one single bubble at a time. Okay. So using a new system, yeah. uh, we were able to make bubbles on a demand. So one okay. bubble yeah, at really a time good. like this. Yeah. 
Um, so that's yeah what we are also looking into. So that's basically all about making the bubbles. Okay. And, then... and once the bubbles are made, uh, we have to move the bubbles because yep. yeah. we want to eventually remove these bubbles. So go on to so, next step. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Um, so what I'm proposing is. Um, we, by using acoustic radiation force, mm. we can remotely control the motion of the micro bubbles. Cool. So, acoustic radiation force is, well, it uses acoustic waves, so sound, sound pressure waves, waves yeah. Yeah. to uh, remotely move or exert force on any object, cool. such as bubbles. So, using that, we can push the bubbles, and um, maybe by manipulating this mechanism, we might be able to. Um, effectively remove micro bubbles. Okay, okay. So, yeah, in terms of physics, if you're interested. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go, uh, All right, so in terms of physics, um, yeah. so basically sound waves are pressure waves, yep. which are sinusoidal. Yeah. So, and when those sound waves affect or drive air bubbles, by that I mean because of the sinusoidal uh, pressure waves are affecting the bubbles, the bubbles will respond to it yeah. by oscillating its volume. So its volume will change. Ah, okay. um, also sinusoidal. Yeah, so cool. those two sinusoidal effects, so driving force yeah. and its response in volume, can interact with each other and that somehow results in resultant force that pushes the bubble in certain direction. Ah, okay, okay, cool. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, right, that's, that's very interesting, yeah. yeah that's what yeah. we're hoping to use um, to achieve the bubble removal. And what's so, this? Yeah, yeah, so this is another well, preliminary uh, video of our result. Yeah. So just to prove the concept that acoustic radiation force can move the bubbles. Yeah. So as you can see, um, well, in the middle is a pipette, and this pipette is simply injecting the bubbles. And these bubbles are floating towards you out of the page. Okay. Or copy away. From you. Okay. So as bubbles are floating, well right now acoustic is off, but with the acoustic waves on, you can see the bubbles oh. being pushed from the right to the left. So it starts fading away, which means it's having an effect, yeah. Exactly. So uh, yes, so this is basically a demonstration of how acoustic waves can be used to move bubbles selectively. Cool, yeah. Uh, yeah, well that's very interesting. Um, how, how, what does your setup look like? Well, that's very interesting in terms of the results, but how are you, how are you actually getting Yeah, so, um, well, we have basically three main components in this experiment. Yeah. So in terms of making the bubbles, uh, we have a uh, compressed air coming from uh, the pressure out the port. Uh, it comes through here, and this compressed air is filtered because we want to have clean, uh, particle-free air source. So it's filtered through two filters mm -hmm. and this is a pressure regulator. Yep. So despite the pressures upstream, well there can be some fluctuations because it's driven by compressor. This regulator will stabilize the pressure cool. downstream and we can also uh, change the pressure levels. Okay, that's really cool. Yeah, so that's connected to uh, a manifold where I can control the valves to open and close. Ah, okay, okay. And yeah. that's connected to a bubble generator. So that's where our micro pipette and flow is uh, located. In some sort of bath with water. I exactly. Guess, yeah. So um, this is a, well, I'll call this an acoustic box. Cool. Yeah. So uh, it's, well, it will contain water. Yeah. And on the side, you can see there is um, an acoustic window. It's essentially a membrane. Yeah. Uh, in the wall okay. that I can attach an acoustic or ultrasonic transducer yep. to effectively transmit the acoustic waves that mm. once the bubbles are generated they will be will be able to see the effects of the acoustic waves downstream within this acoustic box. Okay. And like under your bath there seems to be an opening. Is that like is that how you're getting the recordings? Exactly, yeah. yeah. So because these micro bubbles are so small, yeah. they're not visible to our eyes. And also, these are there. It's it's a dynamic phenomenon, so mm. it's really hard to capture all the movements yeah. with obviously naked eyes or normal camera. So we need a microscope. Mm. So there's an optical access from below the acoustic box, and we also have a high speed camera that can capture the dynamics of this phenomenon okay. at a very high frame rate. Right, that's really cool. Yeah. I guess, yeah, when you're working with microns, you need all this. Yes. Um, 
Okay, so you've sh you've said where where these micro bubbles come into effect, but in terms of uh, just to give it a, give a bit of clinical background, what what happens if micro bubbles go into your body? What's the downside? So yeah, what's what's so bad about yeah, micro bubbles? Essentially, right? yeah. yeah. So air bubbles yeah. are well, obviously they they're not supposed to be in our body, mm. but once they are introduced in, into our bloodstream, there are two main ways that they can cause harm. Yeah. So the first and most obvious uh, way is that these air bubbles can get stuck in small uh, blood vessels yeah. and that can block uh, blood flow, which will lead to ischemic injuries downstream uh, from the blockage. Okay. So that's one way. Yeah. Uh, the other way is, so because air bubble is foreign to our body, our, once they're um, detected by our body, yeah. it, our body will respond to them by, by inflammatory um, process. So our body will uh, respond to it by inflammation and that yeah. can also cause injury to the tissues. Right, yeah. It's very, very applicable, I guess, and important. Uh, but, okay, so going forth from there, so you've got a lot of setup. What are the challenging aspects of this, this setup and your research, essentially? Yeah, so, well, I think there's so many challenges, mm. especially when you do research. Yeah. Um, so, well, I guess there are challenges at every step of the way. So okay. the system itself is quite complicated. We have, uh, we have a water flow, we have a gas flow, we also have a microcontroller, yep. uh, and we have high-speed camera. So all of these to be integrated, mm. it's... It's, it's, it's not the easiest job. It just doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah so that's our challenge. Yeah. But also there were challenges because um, even though we were able to simply use the publications that are available to make small micro bubbles, yeah. we couldn't use that because they, re they used very high flow rates. So I've shown you a few videos previously. The first two videos you could see that it only generated multiple bubbles yeah. continuously and it required high flow rate because it depends on the, uh, the drag force. Yeah. And that limits uh, its applicability down the track with the acoustics. Okay, okay. So the challenge for us was to improve this bubble generator mm. so that we have better control and also the ability to make single bubble at a time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that sure. was one challenge and we, are, we believe we are handling it. Okay. But yeah, it's in the process. Okay. And also the, the real challenge could be, um, so once all of this is achieved yeah. and we can move the bubbles, then the challenge is, you know, how do we design or how do we manipulate this acoustic radiation force mm -hmm. so that they're not just moved, yeah. but they're actually effectively removed from the blood flow, yeah. Yeah. the fluid domain. So yeah. that's... So that's, so that's one of the future work as well, is it? Exactly. Or what, what else can develop from your research? Or? Oh, well, I, um, it seems like, the, yeah, okay. So there's a lot of things that we can do. So mm -hmm. the first thing is once, well, the most important, well, after all this is answered, yeah. um, assuming that I'm able to achieve this new, better design of removing the bubble, yeah. the next question after that would be, basically biocompatibility. Yeah. Can this be achieved without damaging the blood? Yeah. Yeah. How safe is it? And if it does damage the blood, then what is the safe limit that we can use? What's the maximum acoustic intensity that we can use? Okay. Is there a safer way to apply the acoustic waves? Yeah. So that's obviously uh, one of the main uh, future works that, that can branch out from this. Yeah. Okay. Um, because obviously we're dealing with water. Uh, sorry, we're dealing with the blood. Blood, actually. Which, yeah. yeah. And, you know, there's another example. Um, yeah, so, go for it. Uh, clinicians undermine the effect of the micro bubbles. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to larger air bubbles. Yeah. The reason for that is micro bubbles are very small, mm. and because of that, they have very high surface tension. And that helps these micro bubbles to dissolve away relatively quickly. Okay. Uh, and we, there's a you know uh, well-established theory behind this, and actually there's a formula that can be used to predict how fast they would dissolve. Okay. But the problem is this is all assuming it's pure water. Ah, but we right. are dealing with microbubbles in blood. Yeah. And blood has, unlike water, 
a lot of components in them, one of which is fibrin. And yeah. these fibrins can coat the micro bubbles yeah. and hence extend its residence time, yeah. stabilize it. So, um, and there is no clear understanding on how this works, yeah. how much uh, the fibrins can extend its residence time. And obviously once we can generate the bubbles in a very controlled way, we will be able to investigate this problem as well. Oh, yeah, this is, will be another project. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah, because I guess that's taking it to the next step from, from what you've got.